All right. Well, thank you for having me back. It's awesome to be back uh, this year. And uh, I thought it was interesting that you were talking. The, the, the topic this year was, was motivation. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I stopped at a local Burger King here in Frankfurt. It was in the afternoon. We stopped to get a late lunch. And so it's, it's after the lunch rush, so there's, there's no, really no line, and there's a couple of people in line. And we walked in, and the person at the register uh, looked to be the manager. And so we walked in, and uh, the manager called to an employee who was on break and said, you know, would you come and, you know, man the other register? And this lady yelled from where she was sitting at him and said, uh, I'm on break. I've handled the register by myself before. And I thought, ooh, somebody, you know, we need some management uh, conversations going here. Uh, and and I... I found out later, because my, one of my employees went, who was with me at the time, went back to that Burger King the next day, and the lady recognized him, and I think the manager rec recognized who I was, and told her, must have told her, because she was really embarrassed. But the thing I thought about, though, first of all, for those of you who frequent Chick-fil-A as much as I do, do you think you would have gotten that from Chick-fil-A if the manager, nope. Not at all, not at all, absolutely. It was, and it was such a, it, it was, it, you know, I, I'm still in, part of me is still in management mode. I've, I've had, if, if you've read my bio, you see I've had a, a pretty uh, varied career. I uh, worked at GM for a while, uh, spent seven years in the Air Force uh, as an officer, computer systems officer, and I worked for 19 years in the corrugated packaging industry uh, starting as a supervisor and various roles rising up to a plant manager. And the, the uh, person that I started in the industry with, the plant manager up there, Ter Teresa Bayshore, a fantastic manager, uh, we often, she often shepherded her crew, those, those of us who were her, her team, her plant management, her leadership, uh, we were always studying something. We, she, she had a book of one type or another. Uh, so we were always uh, studying different management styles. Uh, anybody here read Fish? It's, it's Fish! Exclamation point. I think if you have to pick one book, that's the book to read. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, that is actually based on, uh, there's a fish market in Seattle. Uh, and, uh, What's the name of it? Pike? Pike Place, yes. And the people who work there are really happy. In fact, if, when you go there, it's not just the fish market. There's, a, it's, there's other stuff there in this market. I went to Seattle. I had to see it for myself when I was out in Seattle on business. And in this fish market, they actually throw fish. Uh, and they'll actually do that with their customers if you so desire. Um, I don't recommend that because they're big fish and they're slippery and they, they will throw one at you. But these guys are just happy, you know, in this, and you know the environment, it's cold, it's, it's slimy, it's, it could be not fun, but these guys, these employees were so happy and that's what spurred the, the author of Fish, with an exclamation point, to write the book. And they, she just, she, they found lots of, um, plenty of, lessons learned from watching these employees, uh, uh, you know, lessons for us to motivate us. But, but I was, but it's just interesting, I was just discussing just yesterday about, we were, I was discussing motivation, I was touring, well I won't tell you where it was, but it was a depressed area, small town in Kentucky, depressed area, and a lady who had moved away was showing me, she came back and she was uh, showing me around the town and she was telling me how things used to be, and she was telling me that now, the people who are there now, the people who are left, because many have moved away, some of, you know, they've, they've just, they've moved on and up and out, and she was telling me how the people who are there now are not, are, they seem to be unmotivated, was the word she used. Uh, you know, they sit around, the, the teen pregnancy rate is skyrocketing in this little town, and so we, were, we had a discussion about motivation. 
you know, what motivates people to do what they do or what motivates them to not do something? Uh, and this is, it's, a, it's a topic that has come up in my own life because I grew up poor in Detroit, uh, one of four girls raised by, you know, t my mom turned out to be a single mom after my parents divorced. And a lot of, neg I'm surrounded by negativity and yet my three sisters and I are all first generation college. You know, so somewhere, somewhere there must have been something either within us or from without that, that helped that to happen. And part of that I maintain is, is internal motivation. You're gonna meet people, there, I'm sure maybe you've, you've met some of them. There are some people, you, I call them the unmotivated. They're not motivated by anything. They're just not. I worked with a, such a person in the Air Force. Um, he was a little miffed. He didn't get made a navigator. And um, he was actually determined to do nothing for the six years that he owed the Air Force, the United States Air Force. And when I say do nothing, he did as little as possible. So no amount of motivation was going to encourage him to become a good employee. But I've looked over, I've, I've looked over the range of my career at the times when I've been in a leadership position. So when I was in the military, I was an officer, so I was in charge of other people. And, and in the corrugated uh, business, when I was in, I was I started out in a leadership position as a supervisor, and then were, there were various leadership positions over time, and that includes, and then so fast forward to even now as lieutenant governor, and so I've looked at at those those various uh, jobs to see what not only what motivates me, but more importantly, how have I motivated the people that I supervise or or, or for whom I'm responsible. And, and there's, there's the lesson. I think the main lesson, though, is that people are motivated by different things. They really are. So when I was in sales, for example, uh, I could have made a ton of money by bringing in new business, a ton of money. It's, you know, the, my company valued new business so much that they offered fantastic bonuses if you brought in new business continually. Well, I didn't, I didn't do that. Uh, I don't know if I just sucked at it or it was a combination of sucking at it and, and my territory wasn't great. But the, the thing for me though was what I valued was taking care of the customer. I was really good at taking care of the customers I already had and not only, not only taking care of them but growing that business uh, to the point that when I eventually left, I had one of the largest accounts in my company or in my plant and they lost that business when I left. Uh, because I had taken such good care of them and helped them to grow and was a resource to them. But the company didn't care about that. The company didn't care at all if you grew an existing account. Uh, so money for me was never the, motiv the motivator. And I remember my supervisor sitting down with me and saying, Janine, you know, you can make lots of money if you just brought in more new business. And I said, you know what would, mo you know what would, what would motivate me, because I, at the time he told we had the conversation, you too was touring the states. And I said, if you will get me two tickets, prepaid, all expenses paid, put me in a hotel, drive me, you know, it doesn't have to be in a limo, but drive me to get me backstage to meet Bono. I said, oh my gosh. I, you know, he said, well, you can buy your own tickets if you got this. I said, no, you don't understand. It's not about the money, it's the experience for me. And so that was, you know, different, different. So we kind of clashed a little bit there. So they didn't offer, they never offered that, by the way. Um, I thought that was a great thing. But I have noticed, though, that, that people are motivated by different things, but there are, they have been some commonalities all the way through the Air Force to the box plants to even today. Uh, I find that, uh, first of all, the workplace has to be, a joyous place to work. It really has to be a fun place to work. Uh, and that's the lesson, I think, from the fish book. Uh, the, first of all, the fish book talks about 
the fish book is more, it's not necessarily the managers making it fun, but it's more about the attitude of the employees because the, the employees have to want to come to work. They, and they have to want to do a good job. And they have to, it talks about them bringing, wanting to bring their energy and passion to work every day. That's, in, that's an internal thing, I believe. But it's easy to do that if it's a fun place to work. I think most people want their, their workplace to be full of joy. And if you've ever visited me in, in my, in the, just if, when I'm in the office, in the Lieutenant Governor's office, we have people who just come in and just sit on the couch for a few minutes at, you know, in our waiting area. Because our, my office is full of joy. I only have a staff of four people, uh, but I chose wisely. Um, and there's a lesson there too. It starts, sometimes it starts with hiring the right people. Sometimes you have to look beyond the qualifications. You really, I think the interview process is really, really critical when you're hiring people. You know, you have to find people who fit. Find people with an upbeat attitude. You can teach a person with an upbeat attitude anything. And it just about anything. And so the people who work for me, so I, so just so you know, uh, my chief of staff is Steve Nipper. He ran for the Secretary of State unsuccessfully, uh, but he's, he's just amazing. Uh, my deputy chief of staff, uh, Adrian Southworth, uh, in fact, she's, so in addition, I've never met anybody who can read a bill like her. She reads bills. She loves reading bills, okay? And, then, and watching the legislative proceedings. She had, I mean, she's eating lunch and watching the proceedings on the floor. She loves this. But in her other life, she was a graphics artist, so she has done graphics for us for, uh, for example, for our, we've got an entrepreneurship contest. We got the finals this Saturday. She did the graphics for the, uh, for the banners. Uh, we're we're going to unveil a literacy program. She's doing the posters. She's doing the program. She's doing the bookmarks. She enjoys doing these things. Uh, I have um, Cody Patterson, who was hired as my scheduler, but it turns out he's a great project manager, and he's just joyful. And you know where I found him? Because people ask from time to time will ask him. Uh, they think he's in a position of great prestige and power, and I don't know about that. But they asked him how he got his job. But you know how he got his job? I met him. He was a volunteer on Inauguration Day, and we needed a shepherd for my family, somebody who would be with my family to get them whatever they needed. And when I spoke to uh, a friend, recommended him and when I spoke to him over the phone I said now you'll have to make sure my family is fed and and I said my mom loves Wendy's hamburgers and he said I'll get a hundred hamburgers if you need it and and he and he's just and he's he's a young guy he's in his 20s and he's just joyful and upbeat all the time and when I talk about him being a good project manager I had the vision for the entrepreneurship challenge and we did some brainstorming as a group but he was the one who ran with it. He just totally ran with it, and he is, he's, just a, he's just joyful to be around. And then the last person is Ruth LeMaster, who is technically my executive assistant, but she loves education, she loves kids, and so I have a great group, and we're just, and it just works together, it really does. So I think the people matter. But at the end of the day, you still, have, you still have a job to do. Your office has a job to do. Your department has a job to do. The cabinet has a job to do. And you have to get the job done whether somebody is grumpy or not, right? You know, whether it's joyful or not. And so that's, that's, where, uh, that's where some of the issues come in. But, you know, with the, with the people, with the unmotivated, that's where, you, that's where the, the, the non-fun part of management falls in because then you have to say okay well here's your job and here's your duties and and you know and that part's not fun but hopefully the other 80 percent of the people make up for that hopefully they do and i have found that to be true whether it's the air force uh box plant or or you know be, uh, the state of kentucky uh i you know this 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 opportunity gave me or, or this this invitation gave me an opportunity to think about what motivates me. So you already know I'm not motivated by money. Uh, I'm really not. Now, I'm not saying I don't, you know, I, actually, I have said I would do this. This job is so much fun, it turns out. I would do it for free. But don't tell the governor that, okay, because I won't have a salary next year. 
Uh, it really is. Uh, it, it really is joyful. In fact, when I go home and tell my husband some of the things I've done, he just shakes his head. He can't believe they pay me. So last year, I mean last week rather, I spent time in Louisville at the VEX Robotics Finals. You're talking high schoolers and middle schoolers from around the world. You know, con you know converging in Louisville, a thousand teams from over 30 countries, and they are all excited about robots. They all are, and it's a challenge they have to do. This, this year they had to like get these, these um, they look like giant rubber jacks, and they had to throw them in the other side, and it's timed. And, and I went to the elementary school finals um, uh, on Tuesday, and it's, it's at Freedom Hall in the arena, and the kids are just, there was joy. There was true joy before the, before, and this is a, it's like a sporting event. You know the way UK, people are, are crazy about UK sports? These kids were that crazy about robots. This was their sport. And so I got to attend that. I got to, I got to roam the floor and talk to these kids about what they're working on. You know, that's a fun thing to do. You know, I get to travel the state and see, and so people can show me their city, their town, their school, you know, their business, and I really enjoy that. So, uh, I, so I think for me, uh, if I had to distill it to what motivates me, uh, there is, there's, I'm inquisitive, so you have to, I have to feed that. I'm always, I need to be continually learning something. I'm usually juggling, juggling two or three books um, at one time. Uh, one year I took, I think I mentioned I took guitar, electric guitar lessons just so I could learn riffs to ACDC songs and you know, Led Zeppelin songs. Why not, right? Um, took, my husband and I took uh, the Master Gardener class that the UK Extension offices offer. We, we, I took that. and. And we learned that we would, um, if we had to rely on our gardening skills, we would starve. But it's an interesting exercise to try to get something to grow uh, or to reach, research something. Because now I'm into it where you, you know, you're researching there's certain plants that like to grow together. They feed each other. And so, so I'm always learning something. I have to be learning something. And the, the worst thing you could do for me is is throw me in, in an environment where there's no stimulus at all or where I couldn't read. That's, that would be the worst for me. Um, so I have to be learning something. Um, I, I enjoy reading, I enjoy figuring out how stuff works, how things work, whether it's something mechanical, whether it's uh, you know, how things are made, whether it's a process, you know, a political process, how does that work? You know, I actually had taken, long before I was even thinking of even running for office ever, a few years ago, I took a course, it was a one day uh, seminar on uh, candidate training. And it was intended for if you uh, were going to run or was going, were going to help somebody run. And I just wanted to know how does, what is a typical campaign like? I just wanted to know that. And then later when I decided to run, I took that binder off the, I was glad I'd attended. So I just have to be, it's just, it's ongoing. It's interesting that the school, the university where I got my master's degree, the University of Rochester, or as they like me to say, the William E. Simon School of Business, um, they, their motto is Meliora, which means always better. And so it's just interesting, I, you know, that's, I, I love that word, Meliora, always better. Um, I'm also motivated by helping others. I just, if I latch on to something that, that I know is helpful, like the year I discovered Dave Ramsey, I have to tell other people about it. I do, and you know, so I'm, you know, I'm buying the books and I'm giving the books away and I'm you know, paying, if somebody wanted to go through the, his 12 week, week course, I would pay for it. So I just, I'm also motivated by helping each other and that's kind of why, it's, it's one of the reasons why I decided to accept Matt Bevan's offer to be Lieutenant Governor, to run as Lieutenant Governor because it was the opportunity to help make Kentucky better. Uh, and then the, and the final thing I think that, that, that motivates me is to, just to be a better servant. And that, uh, the word servant is on several levels. I serve God first, but you know, it's serving my husband, it's ser serving my, my soon to be 90 year old mom who lives with me. Uh, it's just, it's serving the constituents of the people of Kentucky, but anybody who comes into my path, 
Um, just, and that's, that's actually a reminder that I have that pops up on my phone, be a better servant. Um, and so it's just a reminder, a constant daily reminder to just be a better person and help other people, even the people who, you know, maybe the unmoted, unmotivated, maybe the people who come at you and they're angry. It just, it's, it helps keep me grounded. It really does. So I think those are the things that motivate me. But I recognize that people are motivated by different things. They, they really are. You have to, and the trick is to try to find out what motivates them. Now, over the years, I have been subjected to various personality tests. You know, how many of you have done Myers-Briggs? Yeah, <laughs> not most everybody. I think I've done that two or three times. Um, there, was, there was one that International Paper did, and at the time they did, this was a few years ago, I don't remember, I wish I could remember what it was, but it was a group, they tested all of their salespeople. So there are over 400 salespeople in this huge, almost 500 salespeople in this huge room, and they, they had, we had done the testing that morning, and then they went through various scenarios. How many of you are this? And they had everybody stand up, who was that? How many of you are this? And everybody stood up. And then they said, how many of you are this? And I stood up, and I looked around the room, and there were only two of us out of 500 people. And I, don't, I didn't know what that meant. I'm not sure I still know what that means. But um, maybe, you know, one of us is lieutenant governor now, so maybe that's what that meant. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure what that meant. Um, but, but it's just important to recognize that, that people have different motivations, and you just have to figure out what their motivation is. Because I really don't think anybody goes to work thinking, I want, I'm going to do a bad job today. I want to do a bad job. I think everybody want, I think at the end of the day, people want to be helpful. You want to do a good job. You really do. I just saw a stat that we spend about 75% of our time um, either at work, getting ready to go to work, or thinking about work, or going home from work, or decompressing from work. That's a lot of time. That's a ton of time. So, you know, it tells me you really should, first of all, find something that you love to do. Uh, I've, I've worked with people, I've, especially I saw when I was a supervisor on the plant floor, I, the number of people who said they hated what they did, and I asked them, why are you here? Find something else to do that you love to do. Um, it's, life is just too short to, 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 to spend that much time on something that you absolutely hate. And there's tons of things out there you can try. That's the other beauty of this. Um, I, I mentioned earlier the fish book. Some of the other, who's, who's read Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> that was one of the books. My, my manager was really good at, uh, uh, at giving us things to read, and then we would discuss it. And I, but I was one of the few people who really took it seriously because I remember some of the other supervisors mocking this. Um, you ever heard the term management by walking around? You, you heard of that? Yeah, I've heard of that. And, and although some managers did it, and they just scared people because people thought they were in trouble. So you really have to be careful when you when you do that. I've learned that too. I've I have learned that as lieutenant governor, I can't just go places because people infer things when you're there. It's like, oh wait, why is she on, why is she on the Senate floor? Does she does, is there a bill? Why is she here? I seriously, I went to the Senate floor, and people were wondering why I was what I wanted. And I just want to go watch the action. That's all I went. I just want to watch up in the galley. And so, uh, so you have to be careful. If you're, if you're at the general and you're walking around, people will wonder why you're there. They, they think they're in trouble or, or they think you're, you're, um, you're spying. Uh, team building exercises. Have you guys done these? Have you got, I, mean, I, have, I have done so many team building exercises. You're giving the thumbs up there. There's, there's different kinds. I've done you know, a number of things uh, that are intended to, for you to get to know your teammates and, and, uh, and just build rapport. And I think there's something to that. I really do. If, if you come to my office, we, um, I, I believe in food. I believe in feeding people. And that food has been a common, a common uh, factor in every area, in every arena I've worked in. Um, I, we know we can lure the governor with ice cream 
in the freezer. So he loves ice cream. So if you want to get him there, just tell him you have ice cream. Um, but we always have stuff to eat. We, we, you know, I go, I go to Sam's and get these big things of chips. Um, you know, and we stock the fridge. Uh, and you, you know, you see this at the Googles of the world, and you know, they they just want to have a fun environment. And so they, they, of course, they take it. I mean, wow, they. I would love to work at, at a Google, you know, but uh, but we just we just do that in our office where you know we'll celebrate the birthdays. We'll you know we'll have something, um, cake or something that we shouldn't be eating, um, and you know just just to add that element of fun in in our office. Uh, so the team building exercises are there, and on my birthday last year, my team surprised me by taking me to. Um, it was one of these these. Um, problem-solving things, I can't really remember, it's in Lexington. Breakout, that's it. We had to get up, we had an hour to get off the island before the volcano erupted. And you solved a series of clues and they lock you in. They lock you in this room and if you solve all the clues, you get the combination, you get the code to get out of the room, but you have one hour. And so they surprised me by doing this, and I really didn't think I would enjoy this because I've never been into video games or anything, but this is not a video game. This is a deal where everybody has to work together to solve these clues, and, you, and, and the next clue needs, leads to the next clue leads to the next clue. And so I think we, we did it in 53 minutes, and then they take your picture with a sign that says, I broke out. And we posted this, and we issued a challenge to the governor's office and staff to do this and to beat our time, and I don't think they've been there yet, so we're waiting on that. But but it, it was it turned out to be really fun. I mean, even my executive security, the the Kentucky State Trooper who was with me at the time, was in on it too because he was locked in the room with us, and he was so we were solving clues, and it turned out to be a lot of fun. And if you look at the galley, when if you go to breakout, I had this is it, this was a lot of fun. I recommend this. There's a galley of pictures of the various teams who either made it or didn't make it. And there was one that where they didn't make it and the one guy just had his head hung. You know, he's just got his head down and it's kind of funny. But, uh, but I really enjoyed it. So find some team building exercises to do, uh, but just don't call them team building exercises. You know, it could be it, it's something uh, like, okay, we're going to see the next Star Wars movie as a group, okay? Uh, or something like that. So uh, I, rec I highly recommend that. Um, you know, we try to keep things light in the office. We really do, even though we're, we're dealing with serious things. But honestly, I, you know, I was asked recently why I, why I work so much, because typically, typically lieutenant governors actually don't do much. But, it's, but it is so much fun. It really is. I am in my element. I am, I am really in my element, because I, I get to help. I get to talk to people. I get to talk to kids. We estimated that in the first year, my first year in office, I've spoken to over 40,000 kids all over Kentucky, just sharing my personal story and taking their questions. And you know, and it's a fun thing. You know, you you, you get the range of questions, and I'm now uh, focusing on the at-risk kids. So I'm making sure I get to the alternative schools. But when I visited a, a group of first graders last year in Bowling Green, you know, their question was, can you get corn dogs back on the lunch menu? So, <laughs> so, so, you know, so, I'm, so it's just a fun environment um, that, that, I, that I, but I try to set a, a good tone. One of the things I do, so here's how I motivate, here, here's how I have, here's how I motivate others now and continue to do so. Um, uh, or have done so over the years. Uh, there's, the, there's the element of food that I mentioned. There's always humor. There's always humor um, wherever I am. Um, and I tend to coach people. You know, I tend to, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to be able to help people uh, see that, you know, that thing they thought was a fire, it's not really a fire, or even if it is, you know, our, our approach matters. So let's just take it one step at a time. Let's see what happened. Let's make sure we have the facts. That's number one. And then let's go find out, let's figure out who we need to go talk to and let's fix it. And so, uh, so I, I tend to coach uh, my employees and the people that I come into contact with. I also give them the leeway to do their jobs. I am not a micromanager. I worked for a micromanager once. It was not fun. I would not put that in the fun column. 
Uh, so I so they know what their jobs are, but I give them the leeway uh, to to figure out how to do their jobs, and you know, and when they do that, they tend to improve it on their own. Um, they tend to come up with ideas. You know, they know their jobs. They tend to come up with some solid ideas about doing things differently or better. Uh, and so uh, I've just found that over the years that tends to work. It really does. Um, you can't do that with everybody sometimes. Sometimes people need to be told, you know, they need a little bit more guidance. And sometimes it's a matter of guidance until they can step out. But sometimes some, their personality may not be that person. And again, that goes back to the hiring stage, too. You want to make sure you find people. If you value that, if that's what you want, make sure you have to figure out how to, how to, um, how to determine if that person is that type of person when you interview them. And that's, that's, sometimes that's really hard. Interviewing is, is a hard, it's, it's you know, having uh, hired and fired people. It's, you know, hiring, the hiring process is not easy, but it's worth to put the time into. It really is. So I think my time is almost up here. I don't have to wind down here. Okay, let me just make sure I've got everything that I, that I want to, to share with you today. Um, uh, again, oh, here we go. Um, some of the things, I, I was just thinking about some of the motivations uh, that I've encountered with, with various employees. Some people obviously are driven by money. You know, that promise of the bonus will motivate them every time to work harder. Uh, others want recognition. If they do a good job, they want the recognition, not just from their boss, but you know, maybe even publicly. Um, uh, some, some want status, some just desire to help. They just want to help in some capacity. And so you have to give them opportunities to help, whether they're the teachers or the coaches or whatever it is, or assisting. Um, and, you, and you can naturally see those people. You can find those people. Um, again, some people just want to do a good job whatever they're doing. They just want to do a good job. They just want to, want to make sure they do, it's a job well done at the end of the day. Uh, and, and I'm told that millennials require constant feedback. I have not worked with any millennials yet to, who require constant feedback. In fact, Cody Patterson, my, my uh, scheduler, or his formal title is relations manager, um, he is a millennial, but he is not the type who requires constant feedback. He's, actually, he's an old soul because he loves 1970s music. So he, he really is an old soul. Um, but just be aware that the ages may, may uh, make a difference too. Um, baby boomers, I'm a baby boomer. I don't require constant feedback, but, I, but just understand that there are those who do, and it's not good or bad, it just is. So, and you just have to know the personality types of the people that you're working with. And that's, and, the, and I'll just leave you with this. This is half, this is where the, the team building exercises come in. Get to know the people that you're working with. Uh, it, it's really worthwhile to, f to find out who these people are, not just their family lives, but you know, what they like. You know, are they are they Star Trek fans? You know, avid Star Trek fans, or you know, what what do they like to? What, ask them what they watch on TV. That's usually telling. That's usually a good. That's a good icebreaker. What do you like to watch? Uh, you know, or what do you like to do when you're not at work? What what's your favorite thing to do? Uh, those are. I just find the answers to those questions interesting. What people do when they're not working. Um, you know, the, how they decompress. Um, you, are you spending time with your family? You know, what, what, how are you spending time with your family? So, um, so motivation, you know, just in, in closing, um, again, for the unmotivated, there's no amount of joy or fun that's gonna, that is gonna motivate them. But fortunately, most people are not like that. Most people wanna do a great job and you just have to figure out um, what it is that motivates them to, to make them want to, to come to work with joy uh, and fun every day. And so um, are we going to take questions or do we have time to take questions? Uh, just a few minutes. I could take a couple of questions if anybody has one. And just don't ask me about corn dogs because I can't help you with corn dogs. <laughs> today, so. well, <laughs> we had today. Anything at all? Okay, well, it looks like there are no questions. So, well, thank you all for listening. I appreciate you having me today.